Comedy Central presents Donald Glover. I'm not gonna be able to top that. I'm back in New York, baby. <laughs> I miss this place. This is awesome. I gotta be honest. The first when I, when I got back, I got back on Thursday, right? I got back on Thursday, and uh, I got on. I, the first thing I did, I got on the subway, right? And I got on the subway, and this little person came on the train. Was are there any little people in the audience? Good. I'm gonna say midget. So. <laughs> This midget, you'll see why. This midget came on the, on the train and he pushed my leg and he hit me like that. And I was like, well, he was rude, rude midget. And like, <laughs> pushed me and like, I looked down at him. I was like, hey, you know, I'm not confrontational, but I was like, excuse you. <laughs> and he looked up at me, he's like, you got a problem? <laughs> now, I didn't say anything. Cause like, you know, you're not gonna look like the hero fighting the midget. <laughs> you're not gonna look like, you're like oh, I'm glad you, Kick that midget's ass. I'm glad you took that midget down a peg. I'm glad you did that. Nobody's gonna say that. So like, I didn't say anything, but the whole time in my head, the whole time I'm thinking, I'm like, how do I get this midget to call me a so I can call him a midget? <laughs> you know? Cause when you get called the N word as a black person, you can do anything. It's like getting a gold star in Super Mario Brothers and jump. I hear the, I hear the music when I hear the M where I'm like, da, da, you know, like I get it right into it. I get really into it, you know? And you, you can do anything. Like you can be in a fancy restaurant and just start throwing poop at the walls. And people be like, what, what are you doing? Somebody called him the N word. Oh, yes, Obama, Obama, yes. I just, uh, I just started kind of doing this the stand-up thing, right? So like, you know, I used to I used to write for this show called 30 Rock. And like, <laughs> that's what's up, right? And I, I I love writing that, but when I started doing stand-up, I was like, I, I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk to Tracy about it. I was gonna ask Tracy, what what do you have any tips for me? Because I'm just starting, do you have any tips? And he was like, Yeah, man, talk about penises, man. <laughs> I was like, what? He was like, yeah, man, talk about penises. <laughs> Dudes love that <laughs> man. Talk about penises. I, man, I'll tell you a story, man. One time I had broken into this, this Asian girl's dorm room at Rutgers University. <laughs> and I fell asleep, and they woke me up, and they said, Tracy, you're supposed to be on in five minutes. And I didn't have no material. <laughs> so I just said, for 45 minutes. <laughs> I talked about penises for 45 minutes. Do that, do that, man. So I did that, you know, I didn't know anything. I was like, okay, I'm just Tracy Morgan. I'm gonna listen to him. So I did that, I, I talked about penises and people loved it, it was good, it went well. And then like afterwards, the dude was like, hey, hey, Chris wants to talk to you. I was like, who? He was like, Chris Rock wants to talk to you. I was like, what? Chris Rock, I love Chris Rock. Chris Rock was like, Chris Rock's my idol, right? So I'm like, yeah, so I go up to him. I'm like, oh yeah, it was, I'm excited. He's like, yo, what'd you think? He was like, what the hell was that? <laughs> I was like, I, I don't know. He's like, cause it looked like you went on stage and said for 45 minutes. <laughs> And he ripped into me, man. He ripped into me, and that broke my heart because I love Chris Rock. I used to do his bits all the time. He has a famous bit, uh, bit called, uh, you know, N word versus, you know, black people, and I love that bit. But I wasn't allowed to say the N word in the house. I wasn't allowed. My parents wouldn't let me say the N word, so I, I, I just did black people versus vampires instead. <laughs> I was up there, you know, telling jokes. I was like, "There's two camps, two camps going on. There's black people and vampires." <laughs> The vampires got to go. Every time black people want to have a good time, ignorant ass vampires got to ruin it for everybody. <laughs> Can't keep a blood bank open, grand opening, grand You want to know the worst thing about vampires? <laughs> the worst thing about vampires, vampires can't be in the sun, boy. You can't have no vampire friend and then take them to the beach. <laughs> I, 
I got pretty good at it. I got pretty good at it. <laughs> you know, I didn't, yeah, I just, I, I, I didn't say the N-word. I didn't say I wasn't allowed. I didn't start saying it until like 11th grade, right? That's when I decided, decided to say the N-word. And by then, you, you, you miss your N-word motor skills. You can't say it right. <laughs> like, it would, you know, I would walk down the hall, and people would be like, hey, what's up, man? I'm like, hey, what's up? They'd be like, ah, ah, I know you're black, but mm. <laughs> ah, it's that hard R, man. <laughs> you know? Some people, some people can't say the N-word. Some black people cannot say it, it's true. Can you imagine Seal saying the N-word? <laughs> no, right? You can't have Seal at the, at the Grammys talking about are everywhere. <laughs> Cut up my face. <laughs> no. You can't have that. You can't have like Obama up there just talking and judges like giving a, a press conference or something like that and just have it turn into deaf comedy jam or something. He's like, as we stand here today, <laughs> there are still some Americans who don't believe I have their best interests at heart. <laughs> and I'd like to put those fears to rest today. <laughs> but before I do that, I'd like to talk about how <laughs> be tripping. Because they do. They be tripping. <laughs> be tripping. Especially when bitches be around. Because bitches be wanting to go to the Cheesecake Factory. <laughs> and they be getting their cheesecake with blueberries, strawberries, and caramels. And I'd be like, bitch, that is expensive. When Obama got elected, I was so excited, it was awesome. I, I remember I wore an Obama shirt, right? I wore an Obama shirt the day he got elected. I was expecting High Five City, you know? <laughs> Nobody did anything, <laughs> nothing when I went outside. Nobody said it was, and I kind of realized it's kind of redundant to have a black dude wearing an Obama shirt. Everybody's like, yeah, we know. <laughs> you like Obama, we get it. <laughs> it's just like, you know, I, I do the same thing. I realized it's like, yeah, it's kind of redundant. I don't go up to white people wearing Coldplay shirts. Like, you like Coldplay? For how long? <laughs> Forever? <laughs> the one thing I didn't get about Obama that, that, that kind of made me mad was like, when he was coming up, people were like, we have a serious black candidate for president. We have a serious black, cra we, this is crazy. We have a serious black candidate. And then when he won, they were like, oh, our first multiracial president. And I was like, <laughs> that's not fair. I mean, like, let's set the record straight, okay? If you went outside tonight after this show, and Barack Obama was stealing your car, <laughs> you wouldn't yell, hey, someone stop that mixed guy. <laughs> you wouldn't. <laughs> you wouldn't say that. <laughs> Obama, uh, Obama looks black, so people treat him black. It's like, it's never been about who you are as a person, because that's up to you. You got to choose that stuff. It's about how people treat you. That's what race is about. Like, you know, like, I, like, I got a lot of mixed friends who just don't know how to feel about stuff. Like, they're just like, I'm culturally confused. And I'm just like, man, just, to, no, listen. It's about how people treat you, okay? If you're mixed and you're walking down the street and somebody asks you, hey, what did you think of the movie Julie and Julia? <laughs> you're white. Nobody's ever come up to me and asked me about my opinions on Mad Men and Revolutionary Road. <laughs> no one, okay? Now, if you're walking down the street and you mix with somebody's like, hey, what did you think of last night's episode of The Real Housewives of Atlanta? You're black. <laughs> or gay. <laughs> it's one of the two. But the best, <clears throat> the best part about Obama is that he's a black nerd. I love that junk. Because I'm a black nerd, and that was illegal until like 2003. <laughs> It's awesome. It's so awesome. It's just like there's black nerds everywhere, you know, like it's, it's awesome. It's just like they're everywhere now. It's just, it's so great. And I, I, I love it, like, I, but it was just hard for us growing up. Like, you know, I remember I was like the only black kid at my school for a while. Like I was the only, I remember I went to a white school and white kids were excited. They were super excited. They were like, oh, we got a black kid. This is awesome. We got a black kid. They were like, oh, hey, uh, Donald, uh, what, do you, what kind of rap music you into? And what kind of, what kind of uh, sneakers you like? And I was like, oh, I don't really uh, like uh, rap music. I really enjoy the soulful stylings of the cranberries. Um, <laughs> we could talk about that. And they were like, nah, man, you like sneakers and you like rap music and you go, 
tell us which one you like. I was like, oh, you're hurting me, Steven, you know? <laughs> I, <laughs> it's awesome. I love it. Like, but now I'm allowed to be a black nerd. Now I can do that, you know, because like, I'm allowed to be a black nerd, and a lot of people be like, well, there were black nerds before. There were black nerds before. What about Urkel? <laughs> Urkel was retarded, let's be honest. <laughs> No, he was. If there was a kid named Steve Urkel who went to your school dressed like Steve Urkel, eating cheese all the time, always asking this girl named Laura to marry him, you'd be like, oh yeah, Steve, his brother hit him in the head with a brick when he was five. <laughs> Very sad situation at the Urkel house. That's what you say. <laughs> okay, he's not a nerd, okay? That's not a nerd. Strange, specific stuff. That's what makes a nerd a nerd. If you like strange, specific stuff, that's a nerd, okay? Kanye West is a black nerd. He likes strange, specific stuff. If you go up to Kanye West and say, hey, what are your favorite things? He'll be like, robots and teddy bears. That's a nerd. <laughs> that's a nerd. It's hard relationships, though. Really hard, like, it really broke my heart. Like, it's hard, but like, you know, it's just like, because there's so many things that you learn in a relationship, especially when you're really in love and stuff like that. I, I remember, Guys, tell me if this ever happened to you. Like, you be in the bed, right? And you're with your girl and you're sleeping. And all of a sudden, you're like, ow! And she'd be like, I just had a dream where you were sleeping with another woman. <laughs> and you'd be like, so? She'd be like, explain yourself. Now, anybody else in the world, any other human being, you'd be like, oh, that person has mild schizophrenia, right? <laughs> but because she's your girl and you love her, you'll be like, oh, well, <laughs> you know me. <laughs> <clears throat> That's all you can say. And, you, and no dude in the world can get away with that junk. No dude in your dudes. If your friend came up to you, you, you look at him like he was crazy. He's like, Boom, hey, man, I had a dream where you were mean to me. You stepped on my foot and you ain't saying nothing. <laughs> also, you were holding a baby. And the baby had a very old face. And my teeth fell out and my feet were heavy. And my father was there. I did not see him, but I knew he was there. Watch your ass. With women, like, when I started listening to them, like, really listening once, once the breakup happened, listening to other women, like, I realized, like, every man, every man in this room has a crazy woman story, you know? Like, every man in here is just like, oh, remember Christine? Christine was crazy. Christine was so crazy, remember? And I had my new girl, Christine comes, like, where that bitch? And I was like, Christine, what's going on? I got my new girl, get out of here, Christine. Christine was crazy, right? Christine was crazy. Oh, the memories. <laughs> you know, and, you know, every dude in, in here has that story. And I was like, why don't women have crazy men's stories? Like, why don't women have crazy men's stories? I don't really hear them. And then I realized, I was like, oh, it's because if you got a crazy boyfriend, you gonna die. Just something about men, the second they realize they're crazy, it's like, time to kill everything I love. <laughs> time to kill it all, it's all coming with me. Like, and you can hear a crazy, you can hear a crazy, like, a uh, man's story, but they're not fun, like, crazy women's stories at all. Like, they was just like, oh, remember Charlie? Charlie was so crazy, he used to come over and shoot my dog. <laughs> and it was dead the first time, but he kept shooting it, and uh, then I moved to Florida, and... Uh, he found me. <laughs> now I'm in this wheelchair. <laughs> oh, poor made-up lady. I heard some of them. I'm gonna say some outlandish stuff. I heard some of those oohs and ahs. They were like, oh, it's like, poor made-up lady. <laughs> poor lady that Donald made up can't get up pretend steps. <laughs> Cause she's in a pretend wheelchair. That's what that is. That's all about imagination and stuff like that. 
because I'm a very imaginative person. I, I, I grew up like in a foster home, like my, my parents were foster parents and we had a lot of foster kids and kids like go crazy. It's all about imagination and stuff like that. Like they're all, they're very emotional beings, you know, kids. I remember, you guys remember, you guys remember when the, the lights would go out in your, in, your, in your school? Remember that? Like in the third grade, like when the lights would go out, it'd be like, boom, and kids would be like, ah! Like, kids just lose it. It wasn't even dark. It's like 2 p.m. Sunlight's coming through the window. Kids just like, ah, 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 like just like losing their minds. And the same junk would happen when there was a fire drill, and the principal would come on and tell you there was gonna be a fire drill. Like in two minutes, there's gonna be a fire drill, and be like, ah, ah, ah. Craziness. Kids aren't thinking. We had, I'm, man, we had a teacher named Mr. Brown, right? We had a teacher named Mr. Brown, and he was writing something on the board once. He was writing something on the board, and he farted. <laughs> and you would have thought kids had seen the face of God. <laughs> kids weren't even laughing. They were just sitting there, they're like, <laughs> ah! Ah! They're just like screaming, just screaming. Kids had to get carted out. Kids were screaming and crying. Like, kids had to get carted out. And they were going to, like, the nurse's office. Kids are crying in the hallway. This is like, oh, this is our 9-11. And it was. <laughs> it was their 9-11. Because they never thought anything like that could ever happen. Kids were all in the hallways giving interviews. They were like, oh my God, I remember. Because I was talking to Bertram Harris and he said if my hand was bigger than my face, then I had AIDS. So I put my hand in front of my face and then he slammed it. It was a very funny joke. But then all of a sudden we heard this sound from the front of the room and it was Mr. Brown. And then Johnny Seawright stood up and said, Mr. Brown browned his pants. And that was even funnier. <laughs> My heart goes out to the parents of the children who smelt the fart. <laughs> because that's even funnier than hearing it. Is there a God? You know? <laughs> like I said, I was like growing up in a foster home. It was crazy, man. Like, I remember this one time, like, my mom brought home this kid, and she was like, now be very careful with him, he was molested. And I had never, know, I had never heard that word before. I was like eight years old. I was like, oh my God, what, what does that mean? And she was like, oh God, um, that means a grown up man touched his <laughs> or his butt and he didn't want it. <laughs> and I misheard her. I thought she said a grown up man made him stick his own <laughs> in his own butt. <laughs> So now, I'm terrified to use the bathroom in any public place, because I think a dude with a gun's gonna come in me like, boom, stick your own in your own butt. I'm like, I can't. It's not long enough. I'm just a little boy. Shut up. And I die, right? I thought. <laughs> I thought that was gonna happen. I was really scared. And now I'm obsessed with this kid's <laughs> Like, I'm obsessed with every time we use the bathroom, I'm looking at it, I'm like, it doesn't look long enough to go in his own butt. I'm sorry, it doesn't look long enough. How did he do it? Oh, he's such a survivor. <laughs> and then he would like leave, and then I'd just like tug my stuff a little bit. I would tug it so it'd be long enough to go in my own butt if it ever happened. So, like, I was, like, terrified, and then I, one day I had an epiphany. I'm like, I'm, I'm a genius. I'm a freaking genius. I don't have to go this way. I can go this way. I'm a genius. I'm a genius. So if it ever happened, he'd be like, boom, stick your own in your own butt. I'd be like.
What now, strange man? <laughs> it seems that we're at an impasse. <laughs> you guys have been great. Thank you so much. <laughs>